Hey you guys, this is Mr. Sal. I'm uh, gone for the day, so the subs are just going to play this video. And uh, you'll follow along on the classwork. But, uh, sub, you don't have to pass the classwork out until after we correct the homework, which is coming up. So take a moment, have the students do the bell work, and then we'll show the homework answers in a moment. And here are the answers to the bell work. Here's the first slide for the homework.
And here is the second slide for the homework. All right, uh, this instructions is for the sub. Go ahead and take a moment, have the TAs pass out the classwork, and then after the lesson, after this video is complete, have the TAs pass out the homework. All right, now you guys already know how to solve equations, so this is just a few examples to help you guys uh, refresh on how to solve equations. If you need help with that, uh, you may go to Canvas and watch the videos on solving equation, which should hopefully help you to solve these types of problems, because we're going to be doing a lot of them throughout the rest of this unit.
And here are our answers. So on the first one, x is negative 3. Number 2, x is negative 3 as well. 3x is 7. And 4x is 15. All right, so here we have some situations. We got angles A, B, D, and D, B, C. Notice we need to find the measure of angle D, B, C. Uh, I'm not so concerned with the equation as I am with you guys being able to solve this. These two angles are supplementary because it told us that they are right angles. So given that information, take a moment and see if you could solve for X. All right, so there's our answers. We know that the two angles added together would give us 90 degrees because it is, uh, it tells us that angle ABC, which is this angle right account, will give us a right angle like this. So this angle here, this 50 degree angle, and this angle has to be 90. So in other words, 50 degrees plus X needs to equal 90. From here we subtract 50 from both sides and we get this x equals 90 minus 50 degrees. And so we see that angle DBC is 40 degrees. Now we are told that angle ABC is supplementary or that it forms a straight line. So from here we see the two angles will add up to 180. Just like we have here. And in order to solve for x we'll subtract 24 from both sides. And we can see that the angle represented by x is 156 degrees. All right, take a moment and see if you can solve these for angles 1, 2, 3, and 4. So for these angles, we were given that angle 1 there is also 3x plus 2, and angle 3 is 2x minus 7. Since this is the case, and these angles are vertical from each other, we know the values of angle 2 and 4 are the same as angles 1 and 3 respectively. Now on the other hand, we have angle 1, which is this angle, and angle 3 right account, they form a straight line. So when we add the two, we should get 180. Just like you see right account. And from this point, we're just going to combine like terms. Now we'll add 5 to both sides. And finally, we would divide by 5 on both sides to get the x by itself. 
Now this also does not solve for the two angles there. It just gives us what x is. So when we solve for angle 3, which is 2 times 37 minus 7, plugging that into a calculator tells us that angle 3 is 67 degrees. Now angle 3 and angle 4 are vertical, so they are the same angle measures. And finally, we just need to solve for angle 1, which is 3 times 37 plus 2. Uh, or you could have just taken 180 and subtracted that 67 degrees. Either way will work. And we see that angle 1 is 113 degrees, which also means that angle 2 is 113 degrees. And we have our answers here. I guess we did solve for x as well. And we can put that in. Just like that right there. And there are your answers. All right, go ahead and take a moment, solve for x and y on this problem, and then find the measure of angles ACD, ACE, and DCB. All right, to start this off, I'm going to focus on angles ECB and ACD. So the reason I'm focusing on those two angles is because they are equivalent, because they are vertical from each other. So 70 equals 2x, and ACD, therefore, also is 70 degrees. And to solve for x, we divide by 2 on both sides, and we get x is... 35, so we know the AX, the X is 35. Uh, the next thing I will do is solve for angle DCB, which is this angle here. And I can solve for that using angle ECB because it is supplementary with angle ECB. So this is the equation here. I'll subtract 70 from both sides. And we see that angle DCB is 110 degrees. So I'll write that in here as my answer. Now this also means that angle ACE, which is vertical to angle DCB, is also 110 degrees. Finally, we need to solve for Y. So I'm going to use this equation here, knowing that angle ACE is 110 degrees. So I have 110 equals 2x, but we know x is 35 plus y. So multiplying the 2 and the 35 is 70. We have 110 equals 70. And to solve for y, we simply need to subtract 70 from both sides. And we see there that y is 40. So I'll write it in in the answer part of that. And that right there is my final answer there on the right. So. There we go.
All right, take a moment and do numbers 9 and 10, and then we'll go over them. So for number 9 here, the sum of the two angles, which are the same, is 144. So the equation for this would be 2x equals 144. And to solve, we just divide both sides by 2. And we get that x is 72, or that the two angles are 72 degrees each. Next on number 10, two adjacent angles, A and B, are in the ratio of 4 to 5. So if we looked at the ratio, A would be... 4 and B would be 5. The sum of the angles is equal to 54 degrees. Find the angle measures. So I've set myself a proportion up here where I have the 4 fifths on the left and the A over B to the right because A corresponds with the 4 and B corresponds with the 5. Now on the other hand, A plus B equals 54. So I could solve for one or the other. For example, in the proportion there. What I'm going to do is multiply both sides by B like this and that cancels out the B's and I have a value of A or that A is four-fifths of B and I can rewrite that other equation now. And Now I have this new equation so when I solve for B in that equation I combine the B's on the left giving me nine-fifths B equals 54 and I'll multiply both sides by 5 and then divide by 9 as well give me the full value of B which is 30 degrees now since B is 30 degrees I can now use this equation here and replace the B with 30 degrees and when I do that multiplying and then dividing I get 24 degrees Last thing I would want to do to check is just when I add those two, I get 54, just as it's set up here. It does, and so we know our answer is correct. All right, take a moment and try these, and then I'll just show you the answers for them.
All right, here's number 13. One supplementary angle is 15 degrees less than twice the other. Find the measure of the two supplementary angles. They're supplementary, so we know when we add them together, it will equal 180 degrees. And so I have x and y representing my two different angles. Now, one supplementary angle is 15 degrees less than twice the other, so we'll write an equation for that. And this is what I have now. So the angle is 2 times the other angle, but 15 less than that, so I have minus 15. Now I can replace that part of the equation into this part here. And this is my equation now, solving for x. Then I'll add 15 on both sides. And then finally divide by 3 on both sides. And that gives me my x is, looks like it would be 65 degrees. So to solve for the other angle, I'm just going to go back to the original equation there on the top right. But I'm going to replace x into the equation and then solve for it. So 2 times 65 equals 130, now minus 15. And we get our second angle is... 115 degrees. So we have a 65 degree angle and a 115 degree angle. When we add those two up we get 180 degrees which means they are supplementary and we are good to go. Alright, number 14. Angles A and B together create 90 degree angle. So in other words, angle A and B, A plus B, would give us 90 degrees. And then they tell us A is 4x minus 10 and angle B is 2x minus 20. So I'll just replace those both in the equation, then I'll combine like terms, and I get 6x minus 30 equals 90. Now I'll add 30 to both sides, and then I'll divide by 6 on both sides, and it looks like I get x is 20. Now this is not the solution to this, it just tells me the value of x, so I go back into the two original equations, like this, I do 4 times 20, which is 80. Now minus 10 gives us 70, so that was angle A, which is 70 degrees. The other angle isn't too bad because we can just take 90 minus that 70, and we would know right away that angle B is 20 degrees. Otherwise, we could just replace the x into this equation and solve for angle B. All right, go ahead and take a moment, look at this diagram, and name two complementary angles and two supplementary angles. And here are some examples of those complementary and supplementary angles.
All right, go ahead and take a moment and see if you can find the measure of angles J, N, K, and J, N, L. So for J and K, what I'm going to do is I'm going to acknowledge that this is a straight line here. And that would mean that I N K and N K L are supplementary, so that has to be a 90 degree angle K N L. Now that's not one of the two angles we're trying to find, but it's going to help us a lot because In the problem, it told us that the measure of M and L, which is this angle, is 70 degrees. Now, angle I and J is vertical to that, so this also is 70 degrees. And that also helps us to find J and K, which is complementary with angle I and J. So that means that this angle here has to be 20 degrees and that is J and K, 20 degrees. Finally, uh, the last angle is this J and L business. And since this is 90 degrees and this is 20 degrees, we're just going to add the two and get 110 degrees. All right, take a moment, find the value of x, and I'll show you the answer here in a couple minutes. All right, take a moment, do the same here on number 18. Find the value of x.
All right, before I show you the answer, just remember that this 90 degree angle and this angle are vertical, so they are also equivalent, meaning that 10x minus 15 equals 90 degrees. Then you just solve for x. All right, for number 19, look back at number 13, which I have there at the top, and then uh, just answer number 19. I'll show you the answer here in a couple minutes. All right, we're going to do the same thing for 20. Looking back at 14, how would you check your answer?
All right, then for the perimeter and area of this rectangle, the perimeter, by the way, is just the outer edges of this thing. So I apologize, that's a three, here's a seven. So we're just gonna add all those lengths together. It's like as though this were a fence, we would be finding the length of the fence if we were just to stretch it out. So that'd be three plus seven plus three plus seven, which is 20, in this case, units. And the area is the length times the width, which in this case is three times seven, which would be 21 square units. So what's the difference between perimeter and area? Perimeter is one dimensional, where it's just the length. Area covers a surface or a plane of an object or a shape. All right, this is our review, so take a moment, see if you can find uh, the answers to those two questions there, the three questions there for number three, then I'll show you the answers here in a couple minutes. All right, take a moment and try number four. And then at the end there, scale this rectangle by a factor of four, and write it the expression for the scale of the rectangle's perimeter and area. All right, there's the answers for the perimeter and area. To scale this by a factor of four, 
we would multiply the perimeter there by 4. So that would be the 2y plus 4, but now I would multiply that by 4. Then we can simplify that, but the area is completely different. For the area, we would have the 3 times y minus 1. And then what I would need to do is multiply this entire thing by a scale factor of 4. But since it's an area scale factor, I'm going to have to square that 4, which would give me 16. And then I would multiply that by the, well, I can distribute that, 3y minus 3 now. That looks a little bit better. And then we would distribute that 16 into the parentheses. All right, take a moment, solve this one, and then I'll show you the answers. All right, take a moment and try this one. By the way, this is an x or an inches squared for the area. So notice for the area, which was 18 square inches, they took the length, which is the 3, and multiplied it by the x plus 4 right here. And then when we solve the equation, we get the x, and then to find the length, we just replace it, the x, with the value that we find for x.
All right, it may be helpful to draw a picture on this one. I don't know. Take a moment and see if you can solve this one. I'll show you the answers here in a couple minutes. And there are your answers. All right, take a moment and solve this one, you guys. Just notice that the scale factor is for the side lengths, not the area. So you're going to have to figure out uh, how that's going to affect the area of the scaled garden. All right, here's the answer. Once again, notice that we've multiplied it by the scale factor of one-fourth, but then we have to multiply it by the scale factor once again of one-fourth because this is an area scale factor where we multiply it by the scale factor and then once again by the scale factor. All right, take a moment, solve this one, and then I'll show you the answer here in a couple minutes.
All right, here are your answers. Now take a moment and try this one. There are your answers for number 10. All right, take a moment, read this one carefully, and then see if you can solve for the length of the vertical sides, and the uh, you'll have to find x if the area is 50 as well. So first off, the vertical sides are the two edges that are, well, vertical like this. So we know the perimeter is 1 plus 34x. So we have that 17x. So these two 17x's represent the bottom and the top part of this rectangle. And then we have to add to those the two vertical sides. So I'll, re I'll use V to represent that. And we know that would give us the perimeter, which already is 1 plus 34x. So we just need to solve for v in this case. So when we combine the x's, we get 34x plus 2v from these two v's equals 1 plus 34x. Now to solve for v, we would subtract x or the x's from both sides. So subtract 34x and the interesting thing about this is that 34x minus 34x is 0, right? Well, it's going to be the same thing over here because there was the same number of x's. So we're really just solving 2v equals 1. And to do that, we'll just divide both sides by 2. 
and we see that v is one half. So on this problem, we weren't really solving for x. We were just solving for that vertical side length, which is, again, one half of a unit. So what if the area is 50? Then we can solve for x, which is fine. Because right here we have one half times 17x. That's length times width equals 50, which is the area. That's how we find the area of a rectangle, length times width. So when we multiply these two out, we get 8.5x equals 50. Now we'll divide both sides by 8.5 in order to solve for x. And then finally solving this, x equals 5.88 units. Again, that came from 50 divided by 8.5. All right, take a moment to see if you can try to figure out the perimeter of these figures and also the areas. All right, let's take a look at number 12. We'll find the perimeter of this thing. So first of all, this right here appears to be a square. So this must be 15 centimeters. And so this also would be 15 centimeters right here. What we need to do is find the perimeter or the circumference of this circle. But it's not a full circle. It's only half a circle. So we need to remember that when we calculate that circumference. So when we calculate circumference, we take uh, pi and we'll times it by 2 times the radius, which really just gives us the diameter. But in this specific case, we're only finding it for half a circle, so we're going to divide it by 2. So I have pi times 2 times the radius, which is 7.5, and that divided by 2. And I get 23.56 centimeters, so I'll add that to my 3 fifteens. Now again, we did divide by 2 in order to find the circumference of half of the circle. So when I add these together, I get 68.56 centimeters. The next thing we need to do is find the area. So to find the area of the square, we just have 15 times 15, or length times width. That would give us 225. And then I'm going to find the area of the circle here, or at least half of it. So I've written the formula for finding the area of a circle. But again, I'm going to have to divide that by 2 because it's only half of a circle. Next, I went ahead and replaced the radiuses with the actual value of the radius, 7.5. And that gives me 88.36 centimeters squared. The final thing I'll do is add that to the area of the square. And then I have my area of this shape. So there's my first answer. Uh, there's my two answers, I should say. So the area and the perimeter of this figure. All right, go ahead and try this problem. Uh, the only difference now is that the shape 
attached is a rectangle and then this other shape instead of it being a semicircle or half circle is now a large triangle or two triangles. Alright, so in this problem, it didn't even want the perimeter, so we're not so concerned about that. Uh, I can label this 4 miles here, just because it corresponds with this side length, which shows as 4 miles. So to find the area of the rectangle, I simply take the length and multiply it by the width, and that is 4 and 2, so 4 times 2 is 8, and this would be miles squared. That's the first part. Now on this triangle here, the area is half the base times the height. So what I can do is go in and get rid of my base and my height here and replace them with their respective values, which are 4 and 2. So the base is 4, the height is 2. This would be a 90 degree angle here. And finally, to find the area of that, we would just multiply those together, giving us 4 square miles like this. So I've got the 4, I've got the 8, I just need to add those together and that gives me 12 square miles. All right, take a moment and try this one. I'll have the answer for you here in just a couple minutes. And here are your answers. Take a look at those and check to see how you did. And that's it for this lesson. Go ahead and have the TAs pass out the homework. And the sub, you may need to restart this video for the next period.
where they where you'll have the seventh graders. So thanks you guys. Have the homework done by next time. Obviously, I'm not there, so uh, we'll have to correct the homework and or we'll take scores from the homework next time as well. So have both those ready next time.